Hello guys, welcome to Inspiring Minds. This is Dr. Anil Mahajan. Today we will study about the tracts in the spinal cord. The major topics we will cover today about the spinal cord tracts and its placement, the lesions in its pathway, the clinical manifestations about the Brown's Equart syndrome and we will revise after that. Before I tell you about the spinal cord tracts, in the last video we have discussed about the blood supply of the brain. I have told you posteriorly the blood supply system is made, made by vertebrobasilar system vertebro basilar system where these two vertebral arteries right and left comes and joins to, joins to form the basilar artery and anteriorly main, mainly the system has been carotid system to know more about the blood supply of the brain do watch the video on the youtube channel inspiring minds so let us talk about the spinal cord tracts this is a section of the spinal cord which is the inside of this thing is gray matter this is central canal this is the dorsal area or the posterior area and this is the ventral area or the anterior area here we have the presence of white matter on the basis of this section we will discuss the tracts so about the first tract we will understand the dorsal column about the dorsal column the tract we will discuss under the topic dorsal column medial lemniscus system you need to know i have told you in the section that it is the dorsal area so we have two group of bundles of axons one is medial group which is known as fasciculus gracilis and one is the lateral group which is known as fasciculus cuneatus. Fasciculus gra gracilis is responsible for getting the sensations of the body which is below the diaphragm and fasciculus cuneatus is responsible for getting the sensations above the diaphragm of the body. Now we will understand how it works. Dorsal column medial lemniscus system. Why do we call it this thing? Dorsal column has the first order neuron. Medial lemniscus has second order neuron and the third order neuron has been present in the thalamus which is a relay center. The sensations which has been carried by the dorsal column medial lemniscus system is about majorly touch, pressure and vibration and proprioception and stereognosis too. But majorly we, whenever the presentations has been come, the touch, pressure and vibration presentations are more prone and here the touch is fine touch. For example, if someone has pricked you a needle. This is fine touch. Now we will understand how it, this pathway runs. From the receptors, they carry the sensations like whether it would be a touch receptor, whether it would be a pressure receptor, whether it would be a vibration receptor. From that receptor, it the fibers goes to the dorsal root ganglion where it makes the first order neuron. From the dorsal root ganglion, it goes up, makes fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus and reaches the nucleus cuneatus and nucleus gracilis. Here in the medial medulla, the decussation of the fibers occur. They crosses and they start to run upside on the other part, contralateral side. This is the medial lemniscus. Once the fibers has decussate, now the term has been called the medial lemniscus in the medial medulla. From the, this medial lemniscus, fib fibers are going and the second order neuron has been originated. From the second order neuron, these fibers are going upside to reach to the thalamus relay station center. And from the thalamus, the fibers goes to the internal capsule. Thalamus has third order neurons too. The internal capsule and from internal capsule, the fibers goes to posterior central gyrus where the information has to go. It is one of the example of ascending tract. So guys, the note to be noticed is whenever a person is having cerebral regions, the contralateral side always affected. Whenever the person is having cerebellar regions, the ipsilateral side is affected. Whenever internal capsule lesion, the contralateral side is affected. On the basis of this note, we will be able to solve a lot of questions. So, along uh, along this pathway, if one of the patient is having a lesion on the internal capsule, you have seen internal capsule, the fibers has already been decussated. So, the contralateral lesions will appear. So the contralateral loss of touch, pressure, vibration, proprioception and stereognosis. If the patient is having the lesion in the medial lemniscus, medial lemniscus from where the second order neuron has been originated. That means again the contralateral lesions. Why? The fibers has been crossed already. If the person is having a brown sequard syndrome, brown sequard syndrome, it is one of the syndrome where one hemi section of the spinal cord has been transacted. And it is injury here. It shows to the dorsal root ganglion or dorsal column where from where the fasciculus gracilis fasciculus cuneatus has been originated 
and started to take up the fibers. It is ipsilateral side, the same side. If this is the right side and this is the left side of the patient, the fibers from the spinal cord goes up. It is still ipsilateral. So the ipsilateral loss of all these sensations because the function of the dorsal column is to carry these sensations. So this is about our first column, which is dorsal column. Second column we have in our spinal cord is spinocerebellar tract. Spinocerebellar tract always carry ipsilateral lesions or ipsilateral fibers. This tract has been divided into dorsal, spinocerebellar tract and ventral. M major portion and major manifestations occurs due to dorsal spinocerebellar tract. And the function of this tract is to carry the lower limb positions and proprioception and mainly help in coordination of voluntary motor activity. Help in coordination of voluntary motor activity is one of the function, is main function of the cerebellum. And I have told you in the note that cerebellum lesions are always ipsilateral. So ipsilateral presentations would be there. If a lesion to this tract, dorsal spinocerebellar tract, there would be in coordination of voluntary motor activity. Since the function was coordination, if the lesion is there, then in coordination of voluntary motor activity. And the person is having gait ataxia or we say it cerebellar ataxia. What would be the manifestation if the patient would come? No, the patient won't able to walk in a straight line and tend to fall on the same side. For example, if the lesion on the right side of the dorsal cerebellar tract, the patient would tend to fall on the right side and won't able to walk straight. This is called gait ataxia. And one test physically examined by the neuro, uh, neurologist, which is heel chain test. The doctor asks the patient to move the he heel on the other uh, leg's shin. See, if the lesion is on the right side, the doctor would ask the patient to move the heel on the shin of the other leg. But the patient won't able to move it nicely and gently. He would, the movement would be in, in uncoordinated. See, this is one of the lesions. The right side of the patient has been uh, damaged and the patient is tend to fall to the right side. This is called gait ataxia due to the cerebellar lesion or the injury to the spinocerebellar tract. So third tract in the spinal cord, which is spinothalamic tract. Spinothalamic tract always comes up with the contralateral features and we study it under the spinolemniscus system. Also again, we have the later spinothalamic tract and the ventral spinothalamic tract. And later spinothalamic tract carries the sensation of pain and temperature. Ventral spinothalamic tract carries the sensation, pressure, touch, and here the touch is crude touch. For example, if I have touched any area of our body with a cotton piece, not with a fine needle. It is an example of cross tract. So contralateral features always appear in the person. So this is again the left side of the body, the right side of the body. Here the fibers has been crossed in the spinal cord only, but in the dorsal column, medial amniscus system, the, the fibers has crossed, the decusition has been occurred in the medulla. So once the receptor has come, the first order neuron dorsal root ganglion, the fibers has been crossed and they are now moving up contralaterally because the receptor has been asked from this left side of the body. Now, the first patient we have, if the right side of the internal capsule lesion, what would happen to the patient? The patient would have the contralateral loss of pain, temperature on the left side of the body because the fibers has already been crossed in the spinal cord. Second, if there is an injury to the spinal lemniscus, here it is a spinal lemniscus. Over there in the dorsal column, medial lemniscus system, we said medial lemniscus. Here we say spinal lemniscus and later lemniscus. Then again, if the lesion is there, then we say the contralateral loss. In like, for example, in the medullary or Wellenberg syndrome, contralateral loss of all the functions which has been carried by this tract. Pain, temperature, pressure, touch, crew touch. Then another is, if the right sided bronchioquart syndrome, that means the right side of the spinal cord has been transacted. So this tract would be damaged and again the contralateral loss of pain. Why? Because the fibers has already been crossed over here in the spinal cord only. That is why here we have contralateral loss. In the dorsal column medial amnithical system, the fibers decussation and cross occur at the medial level of medial medulla. That is why in the dorsal column medial amnithical system, the injury if occurs like right brown sequat syndrome, the right side would be affected. Here the contralateral side, that means the left side would be affected. Now we have one more tract in the spinal cord, which is corticospinal tract. Corticospinal tract, it is descending tract. Descending tract means a motor tract. So it is part of the pyramidal system. From five, the fibers are coming from the cerebrum and these are the upper neutron, motor neuron fibers. About the concept of upper motor neurons and lower motor neurons, I will make more clear video on the next section.
where I will discuss about cerebellar regions, internal capsule, basal ganglia, and these fibers. So if damage occur occurs, then upper motor neurons would be damaged, then spastic paralysis. Always keep in mind, upper motor neuron damage or lesion always gives the patient spastic paralysis. And lower motor neuron damage or lesion always gives the patient the flaccid paralysis. So the fourth tract we studied, it is about the corticospinal tract and uh, the pyramidal system. Since I have told you, corticospinal tract, it is a part of pyramidal tract. What does this pyramidal system do in our body? It helps to move skeletal muscles and thus, and we are able to do our all the skilled find voluntary motor activity. With the help of pyramidal system also has the fibers or the tracts, which are corticonuclear tract, which are helping us to move our eye and face and the corticospinal tract, which are helping us to move our hands and upper limbs. So for example, if I tell, tell anyone, to play a violin so the this movement this is a fine movement to play a violin has been done by our pyramidal system but the planning before the pyramidal system work the planning has been done by the extra pyramidal system which is basal ganglia so i have told you in the next session i will tell you about upper motor neuron lower motor neuron concept and the basal ganglia so guys we have studied basically about the four tracks in the spinal cord now about the brown sequard syndrome what does it tell in the brown sequard syndrome due to any cause like road traffic accident there occurs the hemisection transaction of the spinal cord specifically the t10 section hemisection of the spinal cord t10 so all the tracts which we have studied before like the dorsal column fasciculus classis fasciculus cuneatus like corticospinal spinothalamic spinal cerebellar all these tracts would not work and the patient would come with the manifestations now this is the whole summary of the tracts which we have studied in the spinal cord see there are a lot other tracts also which we will study in the cerebellum pathways i hope you like this video do subscribe our channel to know more about these clinical scenarios and knowledges regarding the blood supply of the brain and neuroanatomy or any part thank you